Hello everyone. Week three, um, we're gonna, this week we're, we're still, of course, programming in Python <laughs> using Thani. And I'm gonna start moving into a, a little bit deeper and into some um, object-oriented programming concepts, uh, modules, and uh, the for loop, the, the, the Python for loop, which is implemented using um, a list. It is not always the case in all programs, but in Python it is. So I'm going to just jump into it, and I'm going to start. I'm just going to go through the uh, the write up that I have listed for you, or, or or showing in your module, week two module, three, three, week three module. And um, I, I don't. I'm not going to type it into Thani because I, it's already the code's already right there. You could just kind of copy paste it into Thani if you wanted to follow along with some of the code and tinker with it, and I, I would encourage you to do that. Um, what The one um, caveat I guess I would have there is when you, when you paste it into Thani, the code after you've copied it, you do want to make sure that you don't have any extra spaces to the left of each of the statements that are pasted when they get pasted in, right? Because um, Thani, Python in, in, in general, uses white space, which might be a space from your space bar on your keyboard, or a tab or anything like that, it uses that space to, well, it's useful, that space. We'll, we'll talk about it as we go uh, when we need that space. Um, and so if you copy paste and you wind up with extra space to the left of your code that shouldn't be there, um, you're gonna get an error when you try to run the, the code. So just keep, just keep an eye out for that. But otherwise, go ahead and copy paste the code and, and play around with it if you want. Tinkering is the way to learn how to do this. So I'll present, I'll go through the documentation here and, and kind of present the, the topics to you. And um, we'll just go from there, All right? Uh, let me know in the comments if this format is not working for you or is working for you. I'll keep an eye on that and, and see what kind of adjustments I need to make as we move forward. All right, so let's get to the documentation. All right, so here we are. Beginning is week three, yes. We're going to get into um, some turtles. We're going to start working with some turtles here in, in, in Thani. Uh, Python comes equipped with, well, it may or may not come. The base Python can be extended. Let's say it that way. The, the base code of Python can be extended through the use of something called modules, which we can, uh, we're going to import into Thani. And um, then we can use code that has been written by someone else. So this is a big concept in computer science, the modularity of code. We want to be able to reuse code whenever we possibly can, right? You don't want to have to um, reinvent the wheel uh, all the time. So this is a, a rather simple uh, module that has been written for us contains everything that we need to be able to kind of understand a little bit about object-oriented programming. And so all we really have to do to get, uh, to gain use of this module, it came with, it's like a package, right? It's just a, a bundle um, of, of stuff <laughs> that we can make use of. So um, it, it, it is, modules are not built into the Python programming language. Uh, they, this particular module does come with Thani, so we can um, we don't have to download it or anything. It's already in uh, the download that we downloaded when we downloaded Thani. So all we really have to do is tell the interpreter, basically, hey, I, there's this module there, and I'd like to use that module in this program, right? And so that's, that's how we're going to make use of the code that was there. Now, it's kind of a silly module, but it does illustrate... Um, what we need to do with, they all kind of work the same, right? So we'll, we'll use a simple module that's kind of fun, uh, but any other module that you wanted to use works in a, in a very similar manner, right? So we're going to uh, just go through this. Well, uh, I hope that you guys can see this code. I don't think, I think if I make it bigger, it's not going to. Let's try it. Oh, it did get a little bigger. Good. So I'll make it a little bigger yet. There we go. All right. That didn't work. For me to try and. Okay, well, that's fine. 
Okay, so let's look here at the code that gets this whole ball rolling here. Uh, the first line of code that we've got, import space turtle, and that's a lowercase t. Be careful in Python uh, and other languages. Um, the, 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 the languages are, are all case sensitive, right? So turtle with a lowercase t is something different than turtle with an uppercase t, right? And remember here also, to just drive this point home, it's not like we're talking to a human here, right? You're talking to an inanimate, unthinking object. This is a machine. It's like ex you can't expect it to know, well, I, I, I kind of didn't know that I just wanted to use an uppercase T. Well, in the same way, your car doesn't know that you wanted to turn right either if you don't click turn signal. Right? It's a, because it's a machine. It doesn't think. So that, that's very important for us to recognize that at this early stage because it's something that, you know, I think a lot of people believe that these machines think for them or something, and they don't. They're, it's an inanimate object made of metal and uh, plastic and wires with electricity running through it, like your alarm clock or your phone doesn't think for you. So we have, we, when we state things, we're trying to communicate with an inanimate object here. We're actually communicating with another program. So when we type things in, like turtle with a lowercase t, what's really happening behind the scenes is there's pattern matching that's going on. It's parsing. It's parsing this program and recognizing the details of what's, what has been typed in and, and determining how it should progress based on what it's picking up. Uh, the characters as they come in. In fact, it's parsing at a, at a, at a very fine-grained level. It par parses the I and then the M and then the P, right? And it builds up and it says, oh, oh I, I know this word import that starts with a lowercase i, but I don't know this word import that starts with an uppercase i, right? So you see what I'm saying? It's not really thinking that. I'm, I'm implying, see, I'm making the mistake myself. Let's just not think that way. Remember, it, it's just pattern matching. So one of these things does not look like the other kind of situation here. Sesame Street. Turtle with a lowercase t is not the same as turtle with a turtle, uh, turtle with an uppercase. Okay, and, and that holds true for everything, not just the word turtle, total, uh, uh, turtle. Forward, the word forward here that we're using, that has a lowercase f. And it can't be misspelled because if it's not, if it's misspelled, the machine won't recognize it as the word forward because it's not the word forward anymore, right? If you transpose letters or something, then it's not the same word anymore and the machine doesn't know that word or it's not been, that word is not in the machine's dictionary that it refers to when it's trying to pattern match. So it can't match the pattern, right? So you need to, to make sure that, that your spelling is correct and your case is correct. Syntax is extremely important here. All right, so let's move forward with this code so you can understand this block of code that we have here, these uh, nine lines of code. Import turtle, so the name of this module is turtle, the lowercase t. So import is a keyword in the language. And th so the language expects that when you use the word import, that you're going to put the name of some module, and it's already been set up the uh, to know where these modules should be placed. Um, so that, that is to say where it knows where to find it, right? Because the module should have been put there by a human in a place where it's expected to be. So you're just saying, Hey, I want to start using this code. That's in this, this, well, I, well, it's a human word module, right? This module called turtle. I want to start using that code, right? And then our next line of code line two. Well, well I'll kind of do line two and three, maybe kind of at the same time. This WN and ALEX, these are variables, right? So the variable name of the first one is WN. I know it's a variable because it's not, could, it doesn't have quotes surrounding it. Had there been quotes surrounding it, then I would think that that's a, sh a string. And it's not. It's a, so it's a variable, right? It's not going to just print WN. Right? I think like, and plus, we're not even using the word print, right? So. So the fact that I have that equal sign next, I have a variable not, uh, variable name and then an equal sign, the assignment operator. So I'm trying to place something into this variable, right? 
and the same with the next one. I'm trying to place something into the variable called Alex, name, that I named Alex, right? Or, or that this document has named Alex. Could be anything you want it to be. Variable names are anything you want them to be. They just can't be a keyword, right? So the word import is a keyword. It's a word that exists in the dictionary of the language. So you can't try to change the meaning of a, one of its fundamental uh, keywords, right? You can't change that. So this is not a keyword. It's just something we made up. So that's fine. It's going to be a variable now. So I'm using little case turtle here. So I'm saying go into the module turtle and execute this method. Now, you know, that's a method because we have a name here, screen, and we have an open paren. So at the point, at that point, I know we're calling some sort of method. This is an action that can happen, right? Methods are actions. And then we have something else called attributes that we'll look at as well. And those are like um, qualities, right? so red or green or something like that. But this is different. This is actually called a constructor. So we're trying to construct. It's the screen constructor is what I would actually call that. It takes no arguments. These will be arguments in the middle between the, uh, the parens. We would put some sort of, if we were trying to pass something or say something to um, this function in object oriented programming languages we call that a method instead of a function but they're, they're they're just about the same thing it's okay to at this stage in the game it's okay for us to use those two words interchangeably so method or function the method's called screen it's receiving no argument so let's talk about the dot here for a second so the way they'll read this whole thing would be uh-oh, not all that. Turtle.screen is, we're saying, go into the turtle module. And inside of there, dot, there's a method called screen. Execute that method. Okay. And then here for Alex, that's a variable. And, and then, so it's going to execute screen. Screen is a method. Let's finish this one. Screen's a method that creates I wish it was called window instead, but whoever wrote it decided that they wanted to call it screen. So we now it's called screen. So now we have to call it what it's called. It's called screen with an uppercase S. So um, it creates an instance of a screen. So this, and we're going to call that an object. It creates the object for us. So this is like a, a blueprint. Screen is a blueprint. And we're saying, I need one of those screen things. And so the, the, the interpreter will build one of these in memory for us, right? And so inside the turtle module, call the screen method, right? That screen method will return something. It's actually going to be a, a reference, It'll, a reference to the screen. And we're going to store that reference into this variable called WN. And so now anytime we use the word WN or the, the name WN in our code, we're referring to this object right here that we just created. <clears throat> now I could say WN1 equals and run this code, and then WN2 equals and run this same line of code, turtle.screen, the constructor here, screen. And this just creates a generic screen. The only way to identify the generic screen that just got created is to put it in a unique named variable, uniquely named. So I could do WN1 equals turtle.screen and then WN2 equals turtle.screen and I'd have two screens or, or windows. I'm going to call it, I don't know, I'll swap back and forth. I really wish they just called it window, but it's okay, whatever. And so now this, this one works the same way, right? There's just another... A blueprint in here, another class. These are classes. So these are types. Um, there's another one called turtle with an uppercase T. It's a constructor that lives inside the turtle module. So if we say turtle dot turtle constructor, it will instantiate an, an instance 
of a turtle for us and then give us a, a, a pointer to that turtle, a reference to that turtle, and place it, assign that reference to the variable Alex. So in this code, in these three lines, <clears throat> we got a lot of the stuff kind of going here. We imported a module that has these two. We have to import the module first, right? Because otherwise we have no way to see this, right? And remember this code, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I will right now. The interpreter executes code top-down sequentially, right? So if I try to run something or execute some method that's like this constructor that's in the turtle module before I import the turtle module, that's not going to work, right? Because Python's going to say, I don't know anything about this method turtle or this module uh, turtle that you created here. Either one of these. I don't know anything about this stuff because it's contained in a module that has not yet been imported. So we definitely want to import first. That's why it's on line one. And then we're going to construct the objects next that we want to use. All right, so we use the constructor. You wouldn't know what the name of the constructor is unless we were having this discussion, right? You could look through either documentation of this module, turtle, and you could look at the code of this module and you could determine, figure that out. Uh, but you wouldn't inherently just know that there's a method called screen, uh, yeah, screen in there. That's something we would have to by knowing more about the module, we would have to discover that. And so that's what we're doing here. <coughs> All right. So in addition to the constructors that will create the an instance of each of these objects for us, each of these objects, th these are now new types, right? Just like string type or an int type or anything like that. If we used the, the, the method type and put WN in there, like we did in the, the previous week, Last week, I think we put WN in there. We would get class screen is what it would reply. Just like what we said type and then in parentheses, we put like hello or something and it returned type string. And if we put type and in parentheses four, we would get class int would be returned, right? If you remember. So this would return class screen class turtle so we have two new classes here now we can operate these classes come also bundled this this constructor does a, a number of things for us it creates the object and that object consists of methods that can be that it can actions methods that it that can be run against it as well as uh, attributes and we'll see a number of those so one of the actions in the method or, or in the class turtle that we have now is something called forward and it makes the turtle move forward on the screen All right so we want the screen first create the screen then create the turtle and then we're going to try to make the turtle do something on the screen so we're going to make him move forward the turtle uh, 50. so which object do we want to move forward well the object that Alex re refers to. Remember, Alex is a variable name and it's referring to this object here that just got created. This generic object that's living in memory in, on your computer. So it lives in memory. It's it, this, this name refers to it. We said, okay, go to Alex and call a method that lives there that's called, that's named forward. I know it's a method because there's a name there, right? An English word, forward, followed by an open paren. And that tells me, it's a giveaway. It tells me, oh, this is a method that exists in um, <coughs> the turtle object. This is just an instance of the turtle object. We could have, just like I had mentioned, we could have WN1 and WN2. We could have Alex1, Alex2, Alex3, tests, whatever. We name them whatever we want. Each one of those refers to another instance of a turtle. Each and every one of those instances of the turtle have this method forward that can be called against them. And they have the, the method left and they have the method well forward again, right? 
And they have other methods too. It's just that we're just learning about this one for, for the moment. So just like here, we wanted to go into the module turtle and then execute the method turtle with an uppercase T that lives in that module. Here we want to follow this reference to whatever object it points to and call this method which exists in that object and every other object of type turtle that we create. Right? So this method wants a parameter. So it's got a 50 in here, unlike the constructor. Remember the constructor had it's a method, but it's not taking any kind of argument. All right, so this one does. It takes a 50 and so does left and so does, well, that's forward again. So we're passing it a 50, and that's an integer, right? It's not it's not wrapped in parentheses, uh, um, quote marks. So that's not a string, that's an integer, 50. And this is an integer 90. So this method forward is expecting an argument and it needs to be an integer. I can tell all of these things by looking at this. All right, and then we're gonna just leave this in here. Uh, this is this is how you want a closing screen object. See, it's called this is main loop is an, is a method that it lives inside of WN. What type is WN? It's a screen type. So every time I create a screen, every screen has this method called main loop. And main loop will keep the screen open until I close it. Okay. So with this code, we get a lot of object-oriented um, uh, introduction, an object-oriented programming introduction. We've imported a module. So we'll see how we reuse code that we built. You can build your own module at some point or other and then reuse the code that you write. We can create instances of objects of new types. So we have new types in this programming language too. We make our own types. Here's a type screen, a type turtle. Um, we know these variables refer to individual instances of each of these types. So we instantiate, I'm using vocabulary here that's object-oriented programming language uh, vocabulary. We instantiate an instance of this object. So the object is just code right here sitting somewhere. The code that's in that method executes and a new object is created. They're called objects. Once they're in memory and kind of executing, waiting for something to happen to them or to be called, these are instances of objects. And this variable that we caught that reference in now refers to that object in memory. And so then we, we execute a few uh, methods that are in that object. Okay, and then this is what happens. You'll see it. So you copy and paste that code and um, you can play around with it. But I can tell you right off the bat, look at that. I, yeah, if you copy paste that, you see that space right there? That's gonna give you a problem. You're going to have to delete any time those, if those spaces come through on a copy paste, you're going to have to delete those out. So you put your cursor there in backspace, right? Get those, he said, well, it's not going to like that. I don't think it's going to like that. Execute that code and this is what you should get. Okay, so that's, um, it moved forward 50. That's forward 50. Then left 90 that that gave us a 90 degree turn left and then we move forward 30 so this line is 30 that line's 50. this particular turtle looks like an arrow head that's one of the, the things that we can change that's one of the uh the attributes that we can change uh of, of on a turtle All right so forward and left are actions whereas color of this thing and the shape of it are attributes kind of like in your car you can accelerate that would be, that's an action that you would do in your car uh, but your car might be a particular color right and it has a vin number in your car these, these are attributes of the car not uh, actions of the car it can break it can accelerate those are <coughs> excuse me those are kind of different things all right what we want to say here first line so that, yeah 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 we just went through all that oh my gosh i just did the whole thing here 
which is fine. It's absolutely fine. Okay, so here we have some interesting code right here to look at. Before we just had turtle screen. Now we've added two more lines here. All right, so what I can tell from looking at this is that there are a couple of other, these are going to be attributes that I'm changing. So a, a screen object has an attribute in it called BG color. So I can call this BG color method here and pass it the color that I want. So in this argument, I'm saying, okay, light green, you can make that red, you can make that purple. You do have to use a color that knows. <laughs> and, and you don't know what the, all those are, but you could guess a couple of them. All right? And um, so when it receives that, it's going to make the background color of the screen light green. All right? So that's an attribute, right? That's a quality that the screen has. Uh, the title is going to put a, a, a title on this one called Hello Tess. So it wants this, this method, title, I would call this a setter method. So oftentimes there are setter methods and getter methods. G-E-T-T-E-R, S-E-T-T-E-R, setter and getter. So we're trying to set this attribute here. So we call the attribute, uh, we call the setter method BG color and we pass it what we want to set it to. And then the title. And then we have test turtle up and then we can change Tess's color here. So we're going to change Tess from black, black right now, the arrow was black, to blue. And the pen size, look, there's another one. So we're learning some methods uh, and some attributes that exist in each of these types. And then these forward left, uh, we know all that. Let's take a look at what happened. So we changed, oh, notice that we changed where our left from the direction that we were going, we, 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 we spun instead of going 90, which we did the first time, which was straight up, right? We pulled this left, uh, 120. So it pulled it further back, right? And, um, the pen color is blue. So we did not change the arrow, right? It still has the shape arrow, but the pen color now is blue and the background's green. And here's hello test up at the top. Okay. So, and all of these work the same. We don't know what all methods and attributes are available for us to change, but they all work the same way. Once we know what they are, we can change them all in the same way. We need to know a couple of things. We need to know the name of it, the attribute, and we need to know what type argument does the attribute take? Like in that case, this argument color takes a string. This argument pen size takes an int. So we, we can't put a three in quotes there, it won't work. So we need to know the type that we're supposed to send it. We need to know, you know frankly, if we want to get really in depth on this, we want to know the number of arguments because it could be more than one argument that they want, right? It's possible, I mean, it's very possible. Just in this case, not. Well, just as in this case, we don't want any arguments, right? There's none, there's one, and we could have two, three, 20. It doesn't, you know, whatever. All right, so that's what we got. Now let's move along. So here's a few things. If you're working, th while you're working through this, you want to copy that code, paste it in, I guess. Make sure your spaces are not in front of there. There's no spaces in front of there. And see if you can do a couple of these to that code. This is not something you're going to turn in to me, but the tinkering uh, 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 with this software is the way you learn it. Just like the, that's the way you learn a new phone is by tinkering with it, right? You want to tinker with this, play around with it. So I'll move forward here a little bit. So we've got uh, multiple instances. Yeah, we, we know what an instance is. That's when we call the constructor of a, of a particular um, object. And a new object is created and is sitting in memory waiting for us. Each instance has its own attributes and methods is what we've been saying. So I'm going to draw in blah, 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 blah. So let's see, have we seen all this code? Import turtle, there's the creating, creation of the window, oh, which they call a screen, right? They call it a screen. 
Mm, the title changed here. Hot pink this time for the turtle color, the pen color, right? And the pen size is five, so it's some it's thicker than the last one. <coughs> and here's another one. So we have we have a tur we have a turtle right here in instance. The constructor turtle was called, so we have now have right there an object, an instance of the object turtle living in memory, and this variable test points to it, and now we've done it again. We created another turtle in memory, and we received back a pointer to it, directions to it, right? And we stored that in the one called Alex. So now we have two of these objects floating around in memory, in our computer's memory. And so then we're going to do operations on each of them. Tess and then Alex. All right, keep the window open. You know, if you skip this one, the window's going to close every time. Right? And that's what we wind up with. So it's all based on uh, what kind of actions we're going to do in these. Uh, uh, are they going to be 90s or 80s or once whatever, whatever the angle is going to be. All right, so these are some interesting things to think about here. Yeah, we do have a 360 degrees and a full circle. I don't know that that's anything we need to really discuss. You could have left out the last turn for Alex. You probably should read through these. Because they're just in, they're, it's interesting uh, thoughts into the mind of a programmer. So you can kind of see how people are thinking. Yeah, that's fine. We'll leave that one at that. Now let's do this for loop. So here's where we're going to try to attack. Let me get back up here. You know, when you look at this, this is something we want to keep kind of. Let me switch back to me for a second. Where am I? Uh oh. I don't know what's happened here. Sorry, guys. There we go. I'm back. What we were just saw there, and I'm sure you copy pasted it, so it wasn't quite so painful for you when you were getting it entered into the machine. <laughs> uh, but maybe you noticed it. Maybe if you look back now, you'll see it. Uh, that looks like a lot of repetition there, right? It's the same thing over and over and over again. There's a pattern. There's for sure a pattern there. Whenever we come across that a pattern like that in code a rep a pattern that just keeps rep repeating where we're moving forward a certain amount and down or, or, or around us whatever whatever the pattern is uh, we'd like to be more efficient about writing that kind of code and, and use something that would help us just repeat the pattern we enter the pattern we say okay now do this five times do these three things five times Rather than saying writing it all out five times, we just write it out once and say do this five times. Okay, that's a something in a programming languages and at large is called a repetition structure. We want to do the same thing over and over again. One rep kind of repetition structure that's used in a number of languages is a for loop, and so that's what we're going to use here in Python. But there are while loops and there's a recursion. There are different ways to, to perform that kind of an activity. Uh, but rep repetition is what we're trying to do, and we, we want to. What, what, we're, what this structure provides for us is a way to change the default uh, code execution, which would typically be top down, right? And I was I had just mentioned that it was top down from right straight down. So what we're asking to have happen is uh, uh, some. We want to execute some code and then turn back around and go up back up to the top of it and execute that code again, execute down that code again, and then go to the top of it and execute down that code again. So we're looking to do the same thing over and over and over, not just straight down. All right. So it's cr actually a class of structure in programming languages that are called control structures. So we're controlling the flow of execution. All right. We're, we're, we're trying to alter the default top-down flow of execution. So let's go ahead and jump into that a little bit more and finish that up. All right. 
So that's what we want to do over and over and over again, right? I'd like to just write, get rid of that. Where do we see it? 50, 90, 50, 90. I like to just do these two. I like to say, do that one, two, three, four times. I'll write this, these two lines of code and say, do that four times. All right, hopefully that makes sense. I'll jump on down and see the code. All right, so we're just gonna have a discussion initially here about how the, the structure of a for loop looks and then we'll, we'll apply it to this. All right, this, they look like this in, in Python. This is actually called a list. So a list looks like this in square brackets. It doesn't have to be um, strings. In this case, we want them to be strings. It could be any data type you want them to be, but they're comma separated, right? Each individual element in the list is comma separated, like just like in math. And they're wrapped up in square brackets, right? So that is important that they're wrapped in square brackets. Remember, this is pattern matching. So the, the part, the, the interpreter is looking for, when it sees a square bracket, and then it's some object, and then a comma, that tells it something. At that point, it's matched something. It said, aha, this is a list. Right? So, that, so it knows to keep looking, and it, it'll, it'll know, or it's searching for, it doesn't know anything. It's searching for, it knows that this pattern is complete when it gets to this close right there, right? That ends it. So you don't want to miss that close or, or the interpreter who is not thinking at all, just matching patterns, just keeps on going and going and going, looking for a square bracket to close the open bracket. And if you can't find it, just keep going. And then the program crashes. All right, so syntax is very important here. That's all lowercase, right? It's not uppercase F-O-R. Uppercase F-O-R won't work. Right. So for each, we're using the variable f here. All right. So this is a made-up variable too. A lot of times people use i for uh, because uh, it's an iteration. We're iterating. So many many times you'll see i or p or uh, you know you could use x or y, whatever. It doesn't matter. We're making this up. This is not something that's built into the language. It just needs to have something there. There needs to be some variable. In is a keyword in the language. So for each thing, I'm going to just say very generically, in this list, colon, indented means these things are all the things that I want to do. They're the indentation is grouping them together into one unit, right? Do these things, these indented things. And that can be, you can have as much code in there as you want. Um, they just need to be all indented. All right, and then when the indentation stops, that's how the interpreter knows that the, or discovers, and it's parsing, discovers that the loop is over. The body of the loop. This is the body of the loop. These two right here. Okay, that's the loop variable. It's just, you're making that up. And this is the list. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things in the list. So this is going to operate, this particular loop that we're looking at is going to have seven outputs, right? So first for Joe, Joe's going to, F is going to take on the variable Joe, and then it's going to put, hi, Joe, please come to my, my pantry on, oh, uh, my party on Saturday, right? So that's going to be a one big long string that's going to be put placed, assigned to the variable invite, and then invite, the contents of the variable invite is going to get printed, right? So boom, uh, we're out of the indentation. So that tells the interpreter that the body of the loop is finished. Let's do the next one if another one exists. So it will we'll keep doing this over and over and over for each element in the list. When it runs out of elements, when it hits the end of this thing and it goes back up here and it realizes, well, there aren't any more elements, then it moves on from this point all the way and it, it continues going down. Okay, so let's look at the output here. Yeah, so that's what we would expect, right? So it starts with Joe, Zoe, Brad, 
We've got Joe, Zoe, Brad. All right, and we'll just go on through all of them. So I don't know how many I said there were seven or something. But you say it starts with, with Joe and it ends with Paris. It ends with Paris. So for each element in the list, do these things. All right, so now what we want to think about that before we move on any further. For each element in the list, well, all I want to say is for four times, right? For our original turtle code, we said it's going to be four times here on this. One, two, three, and the last one's four here, right? Four times, do these two things. So these two things are the body of the loop, right? Do this, bump, bump, four times. So I need mean, some way to, to something to cycle through. So we could just use numbers. Right? I could just say, let's see how they do it. I mean, these could be anything you want them to be, right? The, the list, the list elements can be anything you want. What's, what's important here to recognize in the list is that we're going to do this for every single one of these elements. However many there are. So uh, it doesn't matter what those elements are. They could be strings. They could be numbers. They could be anything. It's just however many there are, that's how many we're going to do. There's many times we're going to do the loop body. Okay. Yeah, we're just talking about the flow of that execution. Oh, uh, here they are. Here's the explanation. So it doesn't matter what's in there. Oh, this is it. That's that's the answer. That's our code. For And they used I. For, for, for each one of these, so zero is going to go into I first, and then these two things are going to execute, and then one's going to go into I, and these two are going to execute, and then two is going to go into I, and these execute. So it's going to execute one, two, three, four times, right? Which is what we said we wanted. It's the same thing four times. All right, so something to note here is that we started at zero. You could start anywhere you want because anything can be in there. Uh, but <clears throat> in computer science, we often start things at zero for our first. Our first element, element number one, typically has an index of zero. I'm going to call it an index. It's the first, it's the first element is zero. The second element is one. So we have four elements. There will not be a number four up here, right? Because we started at zero. Okay, so that's important to start getting into your head because you're going to see a lot of that in computer science. Okay, bum, bum, bum. I walk through here. Uh, yeah, in Python, when we know <coughs> that we're just looking, we're not trying to actually, we're not using the zero, the one, the two, or the three. We're just, they're just in there so that there's an element to cycle over. With that example that we did here in this example, we actually wanted to use the word Joe and the word Zoe. Right? So you see those are different in that way. These two examples are different. One of them, we want to use the at least element. It's, it's a part of the output, Joe, Zoe. We need, we need it. In the second example, for our turtle example, we don't ever gonna ever gonna use the zero, the one, the two, the three, or the four in any way. They're just there randomly. You could have put Joe, Zoe, whatever names across there, as long as there were four of them. <laughs> so we don't actually care about what's in there, right? What the actual value is of the, the element is of the list, just that it exists. When we're writing code like that where that quality exists, where we don't really care what the element is, we can use this word, this, this function, this built-in function, range. All right, which is just saying, we need this to happen four times. And we don't, we don't care what they are, just, just do it four times. And so then it'll execute the body of the loop within, uh, for four times. This one, for 10 times. Oh, it is actually creating a list. Okay, so there you go. And there you we see the zero again too. So the 
when the parsing is happening, when it when this gets read, I'm going deep into programming languages now, compiler design. This gets rewritten by the interpreter to. Well, I'll, I'll look at this one. This gets rewritten to this. All right, so this so it looks the same as what we originally did. This is the base code. This is like a shortcut for us. We can just say I want to do it ten times, and internally inside the 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 interpreter, it will rewrite the code for you to, to be like that. All right, so here we have it again. So rather than having zero, one, two, three, four, we just used range four. In the, the next example mm -mm -mm. Uh, and so now what's interesting they're just going to do some more interesting things down here so they're, they're saying c for color they chose c for color and they, they put four different colors up and they're going to in addition to doing these two different things forward and left they're also going to change the color each time right so we've got a couple of things happening all at once here we needed four things to cycle through, so we have four things to cycle through. Yellow, red, purple, and blue. Inside the loop body, we're going to actually use those elements each time. So we know C is going to take on each one of those as we move forward through them. And so then we can utilize that to change the color that Alex, is, is print, is, uh, Alex which is a turtle, is uh, drawing. Well, they're getting, you could try this too while you're at it. Um, they're not going to show us the color of that. Well, you, you're you going to put it in anyway. You're going to copy paste it. So you'll be able to see that, that operating. I don't see anything wrong with that. So I'm pretty sure it's going to work. <coughs> this is the one we were looking at. Uh, up a little more. This one. No. It's going to be down. The first time we had colors. There it is. Just use that one. And then if you're really interested, and it would be good if you were, then I would investigate also how we can do this by putting the list into a variable called CLR. That's that's a not built in. That's just a variable named colors. And then how you can cycle through using a variable instead of the individual elements, right? So let's move on and look at some of the uh, the attributes of methods that are available here. So a couple more of them. All right, so I see some right here. Pen up. So you can pick the pen up, move the turtle. I'm going to put the pen back. There's got to be a pen down. Yep, there it is. Most of it's very intuitive. You just did. Who would have known that there's a there's a method in there called pen up? It makes sense though, right? So pen up, pen down. So you can move the pen up, move Alex forward. And then put the pen back down and then continue drawing if you want it. There's lots of different things you could do. Shape. Oh, good. So there's now Alex is a is a, a actual turtle. And here they are. The different possible strings. See, that's a string that you can pass to the method shape, which is a method, a, a setter method. Uh, for the turtle object that lives in memory and Alex point the, the variable Alex holds the directions to that variable that you're changing right? and you can change the speed so I would play around with some of these if, if, um, if I were here's some code right here you could, you could copy and paste in and just modify some of it but remember you got to keep that indented right there or it won't be in the loop body oh this is an interesting one huh so i'll leave that for you to play around with because we, we will have we do have you do have exercises uh where you're working with um some of these things that we were just talking about uh it's going to be in the homework so it might be helpful i'm sure it's going to be helpful i can tell already kind of by looking at it if you understand this code so i would work with this code a bit 
try and understand it and um, and then if you have any other issues then we can where am I again where am I oh right here and if you have any other issues or misunderstandings then we can catch up shoot me an email or office hours you know find we'll find some way to get together and, and resolve these issues if you're having any If you like this format, let me know in the comments. Or if you don't like it, let me know in the comments so I can try to modify it. All right, catch you later.